All right, last week we read the introduction to the story in Matthew 19 about the rich young ruler who uh, called Jesus. He came to him and said, hey, good master, let's go back and read the whole story and discuss how it relates to the LDS position compared to the Christian. In Matthew 9, 16, it says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But, Jesus continues to say, If thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Now, at this point, most LDS will say, See, see, you have to obey and keep the commandments if you want to go to heaven. To this, I would say that the perspective is both totally true and completely false. It is true in the sense that all who will inherit eternal life must keep the commandments that Jesus gave and that are required for Christians to keep. Uh, I believe, and that is to believe in Jesus Christ and to love. Those are the new Christian, a new commandment I gave you. Those are the commandments. 1 John 3, 22, 23 supports this where it reads, take a look. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of the son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Okay, so where the LDS say you have to keep the commandments, the Christians say, yes, we do believe in keeping the commandments. But what are the commandments? The commandments are you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and it's by that faith you are saved. And then because you have been saved, you love your neighbor as yourself and you love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Those are the, the, the two Christian commandments. But the LDS, if you ask them, what are the commandments? They say, oh, you got to pay your tithe, you got to obey the Sabbath day, you got to follow the prophet, you got to do the five points of the finger man. I mean, they say all these things that you have to do. And the LDS perspective is completely false because of the way they interpret what keeping the commandments is. This was the exact thing that the rich young ruler thought. So the rich young ruler says to Jesus, verse 18, which, as in which commandments? And Jesus replies, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Notice here that he only mentioned six of the Ten Commandments. He just gives him a smattering right there. If he was, if he was willing to save himself by obeying the, all those commandments, he would list all of them with exactness. Here the LDS again would say, see, Jesus says we got to obey all these commandments. To which the Christian would reply, listen, obedience to God is always good in every way, but it is not possible and all will fail who attempt to do it. Jesus knew this, and so he takes the rich young ruler down a path to show him that in spite of all that he has done and accomplished, he is still lacking. That's the point of this story. Verse 20. So the young man said unto Jesus, all these things I have kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Notice that the rich young ruler has based all of the qualifications for eternal life on himself. He, uh, uh, all these things I have kept, he says. So uh, he asks, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And after Jesus lists six of the Ten Commandments, the man replies saying, all these things have I kept from my youth, yet what do I lack? You know, it's all about him. This is where Jesus taps into the heart of the matter, as it were, with the man, which is what we try to do here in the show to tap into the heart of the matter with the LDS. And that is no matter how many commandments you keep, no matter how good of a life you think you've lived, if you fail in one of them in any way, you are destined for hell. If you believe that you are getting there on your own righteousness because you have done right, and you break one, you're destined for hell. This is what Jesus was trying to implement into the rich young ruler. Listen to James 2.10. I think we have it. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Okay? What that says is you obey every commandment that you can imagine. The, the 10 and the 316 that the Jews believe. Every commandment you can imagine. But you break one. You don't obey your mother and father. You don't honor your father and mother on one given day of your life. You are guilty of adultery, murder. Every of the 10 commandments plus the 316 combined. Okay? The rich young ruler could have uh, lived a perfectly, an entire perfect life and broke one commandment. And to get there on his own righteousness was not going to happen. Listen, Jesus said to him, verse 21, 
If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all you have and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and, and come and follow me. Notice that the qualification was not for the rich young ruler to only sell all that he had. That was something Jesus knew he wasn't going to do. Uh, but it was also to come and follow the Lord. See, the Jews under the law, when they were approached by Christ, he said, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, you need to do that, because you're under the law. But to the Gentiles, the, Paul, when he taught the Gentiles, all he said is, you need to believe. That's what you need to do is believe. Context is everything, folks. What was the result? The result was exactly what Jesus knew it would be, verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Next week, we'll try to complete the study of this story where it will be clearly proven that uh, the Lord's message to him is that human beings without God, it's impossible to reach 